Hey everyone, welcome to Relatively Refined. My name is Paula. Well, in today's video, you're going to be hearing from myself as well as my two sisters, Patty and Kathleen. We are going to be doing a fall tablescape video to give you some inspiration for your fall tablescape. Each of us will design a table, and actually I'm going to be designing two because I couldn't decide. <laughs> so, and since I'm a maximalist and have plenty of stuff, it was no problem to create two tablescapes. But each of us will be de developing a tablescape in our own unique personal style using things that we already have on hand, most of which has been thrifted. So stay tuned for a fun video filled to the brim with fall inspiration. To start my fall tablescape, I took everything out of this sweet little antique stand that I keep most of my decorations in, candles and things like that. So I pulled them all out and I put everything on the table that I was considering using when thinking about my fall tablescape, especially the centerpiece. I knew I was going to have a chili party, so um, which is a somewhat of a a casual affair. So I was just trying to decide what pieces I would anchor my table scape in. So I had choices. I had this very long breadboard, antique breadboard. I had another piece of wood that was kind of interesting. I had various candles and candle holders, including these, this round one. And I ended up with the thinking about using these mushroom um, candle holders and that's what i decided on so here is the table all set for a chili party for six so the first thing i did was got rid of my white summery table runner and used this heavier gray striped one that my daughter brought back from mexico he i decided to use that interesting piece of wood um, to keep these little plates that I recently thrifted. They are Fire King milk glass plates that will be used for the cornbread or regular bread. And the little white bowls will be for the fixings, sour cream, cheese, all the things you might put on chili. You can see in the middle, um, my centerpiece was really anchored on both sides by those very interesting mushroom candle holders, really votive holders. Um, and I'll show a closer up in just a minute. Simple place setting, a chili bowl, a charger. Um, these are some Orvis beer glasses that I got that I had thrifted along with a pitcher for water or beer. And like I said, a chili party is really somewhat casual. So I wanted to have a little bit of a casual look to it. There is one of the gold um, mushroom uh, candles. Those are new. I purchased those at TJ Maxx. I just couldn't resist. And then I decided on using that antique breadboard and just filling it with um, little with live acorns. At first, I lined it with that rain uh, reindeer moss, and then I just put little miniature um, pieces. I had picked up a whole bag at a um, an estate sale of fall decor little peaches and apples and um, faux leaves. Um, the acorns are real. I, I threw in a cute, a couple of those cute little um, toadstool mushrooms that I had. Um, and then I was able to pick up a box of six of these candles in the jar, in the little glass container for $5. So that's really the whole centerpiece. There's not a variation of height, which will be nice for us to be able to talk across the table. Um, but it gives off a beautiful glow with those six candles. And I also intertwined some of the little twinkle lights. And on the other side is another one of those. I picked up two of those mushroom candle holders. And there is in a, what looks like a kind of a formal, um, you know, soup pot, but, uh, or terrine, but that is going to be for the chili. And sometimes I like to mix more casual with a little more formal. I only had four of the Orvis glasses. So the other two place settings are also some thrifted pieces and those are Simon Pierce goblets. 
which I was able to pick up, I believe on Facebook Marketplace. The napkins, everything is a very neutral tone, the brown, the, you know, the gray table runner, the brown charger, the sort of off-white dishware that is our everyday dishware. Um, and the napkins are kind of wheat colored with a gold stripe. And, the, and then the bread plates have that wheat design on them in gold. So it's really a very neutral palette um, and just a little bit of color in the centerpiece with the various little elements of fall, whether it be those little toadstools or um, some faux fruit, small apples and pears and things like that. So I'm pleased. I think it came together. I used what I had um, and put together what I think is sort of a, a casual dinner party for six for to have some chili. And I am going to include um, in the description a recipe for my absolutely favorite chili recipe, which being from Vermont, it does use maple syrup. It's a ma turkey maple chili, which is absolutely fantastic. Perfect for a fall gathering. In anticipation of this table setting, I started gathering a few tabletop items and stashing them in my sitting room because that is a room that we don't use very often and so I can sort of put things there as I come across them and they won't be in the way. I tried to look for things that had warm tones. I really love these pheasants. They are metal. I don't know that they're brass. I ended up painting them and they are actually salt and pepper shakers. And I also found these, I have a lot of napkins in these nice sort of oat color and taupe and black. So I pulled those out. And then I started looking through candles. I keep this basket of candles in a drawer in my kitchen. And I love the fall colors. These orange ones I actually just picked up at a rummage sale and they match my sweater. <laughs> That's what I was showing you. I really love this color. But I wasn't sure it really went with anything I had there. Maybe with those colors. But I really like this orange with blue. So I may not use those, I'll think about it. And then I have this lovely mole hollow candle and some beeswax candle and then sort of that brown colored one. And the Friendly Village plates, I was so excited to pull those out and use them. I just covet these and I have so very few. I only have four teacups and saucers. But when I looked at them, I really, you're not going to believe this, but to me, that is not fall. That is spring. Those are sugar maples, and the melted snow on the ground is just not fall. You can see the bare trees, and while the colors may be fall-like, I just can't see anything but spring. That is March in New England, particularly here in Vermont with those leafless sugar maples. I envision sap buckets on them. So I'm just gonna play around with some different color combinations. I thought maybe if I covered the picture, I could get away with it. I love this Johnson Brothers teacup and saucer plate. It's one of my favorites. I love the geometric design and the simplicity of it. And I really like these you probably, I don't know if you've been watching long enough, you'll remember I thrifted those turkey plates and I love them. But I decided I should probably cover up the turkey because that would be much more Thanksgiving. So I'm just going to play around with some color combinations and see what I can come up with. I'll look at the candles and play around with them. 
And then I did pull out a few other things, little embellishments. I thrifted this big box of pine cones for $1.50, and I thought those might look good on the table. But ultimately, I decided that those just were for later in the season. We are in early September, and I'm just not feeling pine cones yet. And I also have these really um, pretty gold fruits. There's apples and pears, and I thought the apples might be nice for this time of year. But um, I think you'll see I don't end up using these. I take a little different direction, but I definitely pulled those out because I thought the colors were great. I like to start any tablescape video with an overview and a little bit about my thought process. So my the look I was going for is a very traditional colonial look. My home is very traditional and I wanted a classic New England early fall late summer table with lots of muted creams and taupes and black to anchor it. Here is an overview of my table set for early fall. You know no tablescape of mine would be complete without a candle and a hurricane glass. I love the way it elevates this beeswax candle and simple black candlestick. And I did incorporate these metal pheasants. Even though they're salt and pepper shakers, these will strictly be decorative. And my centerpiece is a very simple faux white pumpkin, which I hope to replace with a, with a live one in a few weeks. But for now, it just sits atop a black cake stand. For some brown and some more New England colonial look, I opted for these Four Winds bowls. I love the way they look and the size. Just love the look of beeswax candles burning. The table runner I use quite a lot. I love the taupe and cream with the black. And now you get a better look at the table in its entirety. For the actual place setting, I definitely wanted to mirror the colors in the rest of the tablescape. So I have cream and taupe and black. The cup and saucer on top is the False Graph Heritage teacup and saucer, and I love how the sides of the teacup kind of look like a pumpkin, the way they have the facets like that. I just thought it was really um, a nice touch to have that for fall. And then underneath it, I have the black napkin, which I think is a great way to anchor the table and to match the table, um, excuse me, the candlesticks that are in the center. And I also needed it to cover the turkey on my sweet turkey salad plates. These are from Mayotte and I actually thrifted them brand new in a box last year. Um, they were in a box from TJ Maxx and I absolutely love those. And the way the napkin covers the turkey is perfect. And then, of course, my base plate is one I use all the time. It is my Ralph Lauren, just simple white plate. And it's large enough that it almost looks like a charger. I'm also going to show you another option that I actually think I may like better. And I replaced the False Graph cup and saucer with this Johnson Brothers set that is a little more petite and because of that you can see more of the brown salad plate and it also matches the bowl, the Johnson Brothers bowl that I have my tomatoes in on the end of the table. So that's just another option for setting the table. It elevates it a little bit with the pedestal base and uh, here it is in the table with the Johnson Brothers dishes. 
and this is back with the false graph. And there's the tomatoes in that Johnson Brothers rim soup bowl. I'm very happy with how this table setting turned out. It's exactly the look I was going for, which is a simple New England fall table. This is early fall, really late summer at my house, so I'm not really ready to pull out all the stops. And I think this makes a nice transition table. It's easy to pull apart when we eat dinner. And it incorporates all of the elements I love to see in a um, New England table. The blacks, the creams, the taupes. We have birds and tomatoes, which are some natural elements. And everything I have is just shopped from my home. Here's a little overview of my hunt board. Thank you so much for watching my fall tablescape. All right, well, what I did was I much like my sister Patty, went around my house and pulled together some items that I felt would be perfect for a fall tablescape. They don't necessarily all go together and I probably won't use all of them, but I wanted to see what I had on hand that would evoke that cozy fall feeling when I put it out on my tablescape. So I'm going to pick and choose from these items and hopefully put together something that will be really beautiful. All right, well, as I mentioned in the introduction, I'm gonna be doing two different tablescapes. I'm in my apron, so you know I mean business. The first tablescape that I'm gonna do for you is one that is really sort of cottage core themed. It is um, woodsy and floral with fruits and so forth, and just has a very cottage core feeling to it. So let me go ahead and get started with our cottage core tablescape. So I'm going to start first with the textiles and I found these beautiful placemats the other day at the thrift store and I thought they were four for a dollar but it turns out there were six of them so I got them six for a dollar so I'll lay those down and then because cottage core is essentially like a layered look and it it has a lot to do with texture and pattern. I'm going to add a little bit of texture as I step off stage here. <laughs> and I'm going to put down these rattan chargers. I just think the more layers you have, the more cottage-esque it is. And being a maximalist, I love layers. All right, so we've got our base. Now let me go ahead and add the plates. These plates that I'm going to add, I also thrifted. And I got them at Goodwill for 59 cents each not 59 cents for all of them but <laughs> i'm back 59 cents each so these plates are a beautiful fall um pattern with berries and fruits let me see if it's marked on the back it is it is um dalton and company it's the miramont pattern so i'm going to layer these plates down And then I'm going to add a second layer, and I'm going to use my beloved green transferware. Use this transferware that I absolutely love, and um, it just makes a nice little layer on here. And like I said, cottage core is kind of a layered style. So that's the basis of the plates or the settings. Let me add the glassware. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, for the glassware, I'm gonna use these beautiful vintage glasses that my sister Patty thrifted me. She thrifted a set of eight, and they're, they're up on top of my cabinet up there, and they came in their own little caddy. And they have these beautiful gold and silver leaves on them. So I thought they would be perfect for fall. And then in the center of the table, I'm gonna add these brass candlesticks that have leaves on them. And just a simple arrangement of dried flowers in a kind of a pottery crock. I think that gives it a very cottage feel. Now let me set around my flatware. I'm gonna use my gold flatware just because I think it's so very fall 
you know, the warm metals are um, ones that I like to use in the fall. And I did a video talking about different elements to thrift for in the fall, which I will link down below in, in the I cards above. And one of the things that I like to thrift for are warm toned metals. So these gold, this gold flatware falls into that category. All right, I'll go around here. Now, I think I'm setting these the silverware correctly. I'm not Miss Manners, so don't come for me. However, um, I did go to uh, Wellesley College for undergrad in Wellesley, Massachusetts, and Judith Martin, who is Miss Manners, is a Wellesley alum. So I have to keep my manners on to, to uh, <laughs> make sure I bring pride to Wellesley College. So there you have it, the finished pot. Oh, no, you don't have it. Hang on one second. I have my napkins, and these are these really cute napkins that I stamped myself. And I included that in a video that I did probably a week and a half ago. So I will also link that. So these were an easy DIY project and I'm going to add them in. And there we have it, our cottage core tablescape. Okay, so now I'm going to do tablescape number two, and this one has a vintage 70s vibe. Um, and it's something that I really think is fun, and I love the colors. They're the classic autumnal colors in a 70s vibe. And I got the idea for it because I found this tablecloth at the thrift store the other day. Um, Goodwill, it was, I went in, in the evening to drop something off, and of course I had to go in and check it out. But this was there and it was $1.99 and I thought, what great autumn colors. So let me spread it out. I've washed it all up. Now it's an oval shaped tablecloth and I have a round table, but I think it'll work okay. Let me get this all on there. Get it all even. There we go. I love this plaid. To me, this is, screams like 70s, early 80s. All right, so we've got the base layer with our tablecloth. Then I'm going to add this really cool wooden placemat for some texture. I love this. This is 70s to me again. I love that, but that's going to hold our centerpiece spot. So let me get my chargers back. Hold on one second. For again some textures, we'll put down our chargers. And then I am a huge sucker for Japanese stoneware. I love Japanese stoneware. And so I'm going to use these really pretty Japanese stoneware plates with again the fall colors in them. I love the autumn colors. I have a lot of those colors in my house year round. So I'm always drawn to those plates because they usually are in those fall type colors. Then I'm going to add my amber glass glasses to the tablescape. I think these are called, um, or by the brand Whitehall maybe, or Libby's, I'm not sure. Anyway, I love them. They're nice and thick and chunky. I was talking with my sister Patty and we decided that in the 70s, they really made things to last. They were sturdy. You, this Japanese stoneware is very, very sturdy. All right, we have that. Now we need our flatware. And 
Again, I'm going to use the gold flatware just because um, I'm going to set these down till I get the napkins because the warm colored metal tones really are what you want to use because that's what fall is all about making your house warm and cozy bringing in those warm tones even though it's south carolina today it's still still hot unfortunately we are all hoping for a little bit of cool weather to come our way i mean it doesn't have to be freezing but you know maybe down in the 70s would be lovely let me set these here until i get my napkins all right I'm just going to use these kind of chunky checkered napkins in this brown color because, again, that's kind of a 70s color, that brown color. So I'll set those up. And then our last napkin here. All right. Now, let me bring out part of the center piece. You can hit pause, Neve, till I come back. Okay, to anchor the centerpiece, I'm going to use this really cool treasure craft. I guess it would be like a chip and dip or veggies and dip bowl. Um, and I found, again, I found this for $1.99 at the thrift store. And it, you know, has a few little chips in it, but I absolutely love it. And I love those colors. So that's going to be the start of the centerpiece. And I'm going to use the little you know, vegetable parts to hold other little uh, tabletop items. So I have my mushroom salt and pepper shakers because it can't be the 70s without some mushrooms, right? And then I'm going to put just this copper, really it's, I think it's a match holder, but it's just going to be a, a copper holder for my butterscotch handled knives. And this is really just decorative. I've already got knives. It serves no purpose other than to look pretty. So, which is not a bad purpose. So we've got that. Then in the center, I have this mushroom canister. It has a lid. Let me grab the lid. It has a lid. So I just took the lid off and put some dried florals in there. We'll set that right there in the middle next to the other mushrooms. And then in that last spot, I'm going to add a stack of my mid-century modern glog cups for no other reason than they are so mid-century looking. They just kind of go with the whole vibe. So here we have, I'm looking around to see, I think I got everything I need. <laughs> here we have my 1970s inspired tablescape. And stay tuned because nothing says 70s more than a casserole. And I'm going to have a special 1970s inspired vintage recipe to share with you in just a minute. Well, the recipe I'm making is a combination of chicken a la king and chicken pot pie. I had some chicken breasts that I needed to cook, so I cooked and chopped them up. I have a jar back there of homemade chicken stock that I took out of the freezer, some butter, half and half, some flour, green peas, crescent rolls, there's some pimentos hiding back there, and then some onion and garlic powder, salt and pepper. So I'm going to try to put all those together in a way that tastes delicious. First thing I'm going to do is to make a little roux for the white sauce. So I'm going to melt some butter and to that I'll add a little bit of flour and then just let that cook down to um, get the flour taste out and that will be the thickener for our white sauce. I'm giving that a good stir with my Happy Fall um, scraper that my son got me when he started his job at TJ Maxx a couple years ago. To that, I'm going to add some garlic powder, some onion powder, salt, pepper, 
and um, a little bit of Lowry's seasoning salt. And once all those items are in there, I'm gonna give that a good stir and let that all kind of cook together and turn into a roux. You, you wanna continually stir it so that your flour doesn't burn. Um, but once it's nice and browned up, you're gonna add, I added um, a cup of chicken stock, that's homemade chicken stock that I had in the freezer. Stirred that around and then I'm gonna add in some, you can use heavy cream, you can use milk. I used half and half because that's what I had on hand. I will be sure to link this recipe if I can find it. <laughs> um, it's kind of a combination of two. So I'll link both recipes if I can find them in the description box. Now I'm just gonna let that um, kind of come together and heat through and to that I'm gonna add my frozen peas. Give that a good stir and let those cook and bubble on the stove and get a little bit thick. You could certainly add peas and carrots, you could add onions, you could add whatever vegetables you wanted. I'm going to add in the pimentos there for some color, but I love frozen peas. I love peas, green peas, and so that's what I had in my freezer, so that's what I added. All right, that's boiling away, bubbling away, and getting thicker, and to that, I'm adding my chicken, which I have cut up into bite-sized chunks. I'm gonna let that cook together and get heated through and stir that around. And then I'm going to add my secret ingredient. And what I like to add to this, once it gets good and bubbly, is a little bit of apple cider vinegar. I think that that kind of cuts through the richness of the cream sauce and gives it a little bit of a tang. So I add that to my chicken alfredo and I like to add it to anything that's got kind of a thick creamy white sauce and also a little pinch of nutmeg. What I've done is transferred everything into a baking dish and put my crescent dough on top of it just like you would for you know a chicken pot pie and then I'm gonna pop that in the oven at 350 and cook that until those crescent rolls are nice and brown. And there you see it's coming out of the oven and doesn't that look delicious? And now it's time for Relatively Refines where we share our viewers' thrifted treasures. Today's treasure comes from our viewer, Judy. Judy and her husband decided to take a short road trip to Texarkana, Texas and they went to several indoor flea markets. She said that she was just about to leave one of them when she happened to look down and tucked way back in the corner on the bottom shelf was this gorgeous Italian floral soup tureen. It had the tureen, the tray, the ladle, and the lid, and everything was intact. And to her surprise, it was only $15. So she said, yep, she snatched it up. And you know what, Judy, I would have snatched it up too. And I know for sure my sister Patty would have snatched it up because she loves tureens. She paid, as I said, $15. When she got home, she decided to look it up and found that it is valued at about $300. So she got a great deal. She loves her blue and white and it fits right in with her decor. Thank you so much, Judy, for sharing that. And if you would like for us to share one of your thrifted treasures, simply send us an email to the address on the screen with a picture and a brief description, and we will be happy to include it in an upcoming video. All right, that's it for today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our thrifted tablescapes, the casserole recipe, and the relatively refines. Take care, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.